This is Novel Marketing, the show for novelists who aren't necessarily fond of marketing, but still want to become best-selling authors. Episode 177. I'm James L. Rubart, but you can call me Jim. I'm Thomas Umstead Jr. And I'm Ryan Z. And in this episode, we're going to talk to you guys uh, about significantly growing your mailing list and using it to sell more books. And to help us do that, we have a special guest. You've probably already figured that out. Ryan Z. Now, Ryan has been a voracious reader all his life. He started his own bookmarking agency at the age of 25. He's worked with thousands of authors across every major genre and he has created uh, a company called book sweeps which i'm really excited to talk to him about and discover um ryan's bio says that he um lives in new york city but i think we're gonna break this wide open thomas we have an exclusive on so this (laughs) this is wednesday as we're recording by the time you listen to this Ryan will be a resident of Portland, Oregon. So, Ryan, dun, dun, welcome. Dun. <laughs> Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. So, email marketing is a topic that we talk a lot about on Novel Marketing, and we talk about it a lot because it is proven to work. I've done tests, other people have done tests, and it is um, very effective. And so, uh, I just want to ask, you know, I know you're doing lots of experiments with email marketing. Why is email marketing so effective? Well, I mean, I think it comes down to a number of factors. But I mean, one element is definitely the one to one communication aspect. So, you know, as opposed to other social like other uh, marketing channels like social media uh, or Facebook, Twitter, etc. You know, you're speaking to that person directly. There's not a algorithm that's sort of in control of who gets to hear you. Um, and there aren't really limitations in terms of the sorts of content you can put in it. Um, and it's really easy to just direct people to a link where they can learn more about anything that you want to share with them. Yeah. So uh, how can authors make their newsletters m- more f- interesting, right? Because there's just because I've been successful with email newsletters, my clients have been successful. That doesn't mean that every novel is, novelist is successful. Uh, what are s- some things that authors can do so that their readers actually want to open the emails that they send out? Um, I think it comes down to sort of at the beginning, sort of um, pro- like keeping your promises to your reader. So depending on what, um, you know, what is, you know, being aware of what your newsletter uh, sign up form asked them from in the first place, and then sort of delivering on those promises. Um, and so, you know, there are, so depending on how that goes, so if you're, you know, telling them you're going to send them all different kinds of things, um, you know, then it's worth experimenting with different options, you know, quizzes, um, different kinds of, um, you know, uh, news items, um, you know, early access to, you know, uh, books, and, you know, giveaways, uh, freebies. There are lots of different things you can offer, but I think it comes back to sort of what your initial promise is and making sure that you're uh, delivering on it. And to make good promises. So you need to promise something that your readers actually want uh, or promise a prize or a goodie that they want, which means getting to know your reader. (laughs) So uh, this is the secret of marketing is realizing that uh, it's ultimately just a human on the other side. And you need to know the human that you're reaching out to so that you can offer something to them uh, that they are interested in. And this can be as simple as asking them, hey, what would you want to see in an email from me? Uh, I uh, I was working with an author and she was shocked at the answers that she got. She made tweaks to her email list and her open rate probably increased by about 50% over the next month as she incorporated the surprising feedback that she got from her readers. Right. How often, Ryan, would you suggest doing that? Once a year? Once a quarter? uh, Twice a year? How often do you get that input? Yeah, I mean, so I know Mark Dawson, for instance, does it once a year, probably. I think he does it in December. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, I think probably once a year is enough. We do it at Book Sweeps about once a year ourselves. Um, so we ran a big survey last uh, January. It's about time we do it again. Uh, we used, surveyed about 10,000 readers, and we got, you know, some really interesting insights into what they were looking for and sort of, you know, the things they were interested in relative to other things. Um, so it was sort of interesting. To, you know, it didn't necessarily fit what we were expecting. I know we did that with the podcast. It's actually been a little over a year. I think it was fall of... 2017 or late 2017 and it was very surprising uh, we didn't realize how many indie authors we had listening to the podcast and how many nonfiction 
authors we had listening to the podcast and it caused us to make changes uh, to the show. And I'm just going to say, keep an eye out if you're on the email newsletter for Novel Marketing. Uh, We may be uh, sending out a survey here. Uh, Ryan is reminding us we need to be practicing (laughs) what we preach. (laughs) So it's time for another survey. So uh, keep an eye out on your inboxes if you want us to take a different direction with the show or if you like the direction that we're in. yeah. So Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. Already, I'm, learning, I'm getting reminded. Of <laughs> we already have. Okay, Ryan. So the, the the big question that is asked over and over again, the big sweeping question that it'll only take you probably you know eight to ten hours to answer, but but that we like to ask is how can authors grow their email list? Well, <laughs> let me get started on my uh, essay here. But um, <laughs> seriously, um, you know, so. What I specialize in particularly are doing um, list building giveaways, but uh, we can talk about that in a bit. But, you know, there are a bunch of different things I'm seeing that are sort of working. Um, Lead generation ads on Facebook are still doing well. Uh, So those are the sorts of ads um, where you would click on the the image that you see on Facebook and a little box pops up and it just asks you to insert your email. Or I think actually Facebook already has your email, so you just have to type, like, click confirm. Um... And it automatically adds you to their list. And then usually the author would give away a free book or something in exchange. Um, so I think Facebook ads are getting more expensive over time, especially lately with their news, the new news feed out changes. But I, I'm still seeing success with those. And especially if you do them as part of a group. Uh, so if you have like 10 authors in sci-fi or contemporary romance or whatever niche genre that you're writing in, you know, coming together as a group and being able to offer, you know, five or 10 bucks in exchange for an email can uh, really work pretty well. So what are some other things that you're seeing? I love, I like the idea of these Facebook ads. And, and by the way, these lead gen ads are a certain kind of ad in Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash advertising, it's one, uh, it'll ask you, what do you want to accomplish with your ad? And if you say get more email subscribers, it has a special kind of ad specifically for that. Uh, other than Facebook advertising, what else are you seeing that's working right now? Um, I'm still seeing a lot of authors are still having success with cross promotions and newsletter swaps. So a newsletter swap would be, for example, if you have a free book on BookFunnel or a similar kind of site, and uh, that requires an email address, and in order to uh, download it, you would then find another author uh, who writes in the same genre as you, and you would basically swap. Like They would promote your book, you would promote their book. Um, so you're just levering each, leveraging each other's audiences in that way. And obviously you can keep doing that with you know as many authors as you can find who are willing to work with you. And if you're looking for an author to swap your newsletter with and to do a newsletter swap, the Novel Marketing Facebook group, you have permission to reach out to similar authors uh, on our Facebook group uh, to see if they want to swap. And the key with a swap is that you're swapping with a similar author, right? If I'm writing sci-fi and Jim is writing Amish, we wouldn't be good candidates for swapping. Whereas if we both write sci-fi. Unless you write sci-fi Amish. <laughs> it exists. It's a thing. I actually have a uh, Amish vampires in space on my shelf. So it's it. it, it I haven't read it, but I own a copy. <laughs> and you're aware of it. <laughs> well, it's my backup. If I'm ever invited to a white elephant party or a dirty Santa party, it's like, what's the weirdest kind of gift that you can give that fits in the price range? Amish vampires in space. It's a great gift to bring uh, to a holiday party where you're exchanging gag gifts anyway back to the topic well no but I, and, and i'll tell you i know people have read the book and actually really enjoyed it carrie neats is a is a really talented writer and so the book actually works from an entertainment level as well which is kind of cool there you go so newsletter swaps i've heard some good things about newsletter swaps we actually just were talking about newsletter swaps on my other podcast and what i like about this is it's an opportunity to double triple quadruple your reach with your email newsletter um, by uh, leveraging somebody else's email newsletter and authors working together is very powerful. It's almost like creating your own bookbub in a sense where you are bookbub to your audience and somebody else's bookbub to their audience and you just swap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's free. It, I mean, it only really requires your time and some coordination. Um, so the other thing I'm seeing that works still pretty well is uh, you know, in general are cross promotions. Um, so the difference between a cross promotion um, and what we do, I guess I'll get into that. But a cross promotion would generally be um, if uh, what I'm thinking of is if you have you know ten or twenty authors writing you know epic fantasy who you know create a book uh, a page that has you know twenty free books on it, and each author will send traffic to that page, um, and then readers can download each of those books individually. Um, 
So that would be an example of a cross promotion, you know, the sort of thing BookFunnel does. There's some other sites where you can do set up those sort of pages, sorts of pages easily. Um, but that's another strategy, sort of similar to newsletter swaps in a sense, uh, that are still where I'm still seeing are people are still excited about and you know doing regularly. That's cool. So I want to uh, change gears here a little bit and talk about email formatting. Uh, because this is something I, I have strong opinions on. I, I imagine you do as well. So when it comes to effective emails from a formatting perspective, it's the fanciest email that wins, right? Fanciest template, the shiniest <laughs> graphics. Is that is that what works well? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> but my email provider has all these cool templates. Are you telling me I shouldn't be using them? <laughs> yeah, I find that it's one of the things I find really peculiar is that this, these companies will provide these really html heavy templates and then at the same time they'll provide these support articles that recommend you know not using them basically <laughs> you know it's kind of peculiar but you know typically i, I was reading a um, an article somewhere else where they sort of made an analogy that the images in your newsletter are sort of like you could think of it your email is sort of like a plane or something that's flying in the air and each like each image is sort of a weight on it that's sort of dragging it down and making it harder for it to fly and reach its destination. Um, and so, you know, the more, so there's a sort of idea, the sort of the idea here is sort of like the more images you have in your email or the more complicated features you have in your email, the less likely it is to actually reach the person's inbox. And obviously the first rule of email is that, you know, deliverability is king, meaning that, you know, people can't read an email if it doesn't get to them, right? So that's sort of the, the number one uh focus with formatting is just to make sure that the email gets there. And you can do that typically by, you know, either using plain text emails, uh, which I don't do myself, but um, you can also, if you don't want to do that, you can, because they look a little funky, you, you can use, you know, just the normal HTML template, but with minimal or no images. So that might even mean, you know, trying to send an email without a header image. And I know authors are pretty excited. You know, most authors don't want to send an email without a header image. It's sort of, I think it makes them feel a little bit naked. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, I've seen some examples in testing where emit the emails without the header images both, I think, delivered better and they also perform better for reasons we can get into. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've done those tests myself. It's not just that I have seen other people's research. You can do split tests and you can do um, sequential tests and... Uh, when I'm working with a client, one of the first things I'll do if I'm working with their email is I'll strip away all of the formatting. And you're right. It does make people feel uncomfortable. They're like, oh, but I have to have this. But how will anyone know who I am? <laughs> yeah, how people, it's like, because <laughs> it's in the from line. That's like, that's the first thing people see. It's like, oh, it's from Ryan Z. Oh, okay. It's from, you know, oh, it's from Novel Marketing. It's like, oh, now I know who it's from. And think about it. Uh, first off, where do you read emails? You read emails all over on your phone. And so it, that email has to work on that small device. And so lots of graphics and sidebars and background images, all of that make it harder to read on the primary place people read email, which is on uh, their mobile device. Not everyone has a big fancy screen on their phone. Some people have very small, tiny you know, phones still. But not only that, think about the kind of emails you want to get, like the kind of emails you enjoy reading are from real people in your real life. And how are those emails formatted? They're not. It's just plain to text. It says, hey, dear John, blah, 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 blah. And and having your email be like that, where you have the recipient's first name be the first word in the email, and then you send it like it's a real email, really is powerful. It doesn't mean you can't include a photo of your book cover. Uh, but if you do, make sure you use, and I learned this the hard way in MailChimp, if you're using MailChimp, make sure you use the image box anytime you insert an image. Don't insert it in the main body of the email because otherwise it messes up the mobile formatting. <laughs> so uh, may, use your email provider special image features if you're going to send uh, or include an image. Yeah, definitely. But believe it or not, plain text emails outperform, and they outperform significantly. And and, and that means money, right? That's Those are clicks and opens you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, which means sales you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. What about the person, though, that says, you know, I want to see a picture every now and then, and I, I like the cats. I mean, I think of our friend Susie Thomas, and she is great at sending out these pictures of her life, and her readers Love that. Love seeing these little snippets of life. How? What would you? What would you say to somebody that a reader that says, "No, I like the picture every now and then." So I actually taught a class with Susie, and she recommends plain text emails. She doesn't have a banner or a template, but she does include photos, kind of down 
the email in that same way of like in the body of the email and it's its own kind of unit. If it, she doesn't use MailChimp, she uses ConvertKit, but it's the same idea of like, it's a discrete uh, image that sits full width. It's, you're not trying to wrap text or do anything crazy. And it, uh, it's a very simple image and that does work. So, and we do that right? in novel marketing. Right? If you some, sign up at novelmarketing.com, it's not like we have no images at all, but we only have images if they make sense. We don't have some flashy banner image. It's like Tom, Jim and my faces smiling, pointing <laughs> at the camera, all goofy. And it's not because we didn't take those photos. We took those photos and we looked at them and they were like, you know, less is more. And a goofy photo of Thomas and Jim pointing at the camera Maybe not actually the most effective thing. So uh, that image uh, will never be seen. <laughs> it won't. It won't. That's in the archives. I just want people to make sure that they realize if their style works with having some photos, there is a way to put photos in tastefully and every now and then that can work. But like Thomas said, just make sure that that is done within your email provider's guidelines in a way that it's going to work across devices. I'm just going to ask, do you want are you sure you don't want to sh- give those uh, photos to your uh, Patreon supporters? <laughs> <laughs> That's the $75 a month level, right? <laughs> <laughs> if the photos still exist and if you do want them patrons, leave a comment in Patreon if you want to see <laughs> the embarrassing photos of Thomas and Jim and I will dig them up. And maybe we'll give them out as a special Patreon preview. We will embarrass ourselves for our patrons. That's how much we appreciate you people. (laughs) And here, Thomas, here, I thought I liked Ryan. Um, (laughs) (laughs) This episode's already off the rails. We're already only halfway through. Uh, So, but the the bottom line is uh, simpler is better when it comes to email for a whole bunch of reasons. And when in doubt, go with the simpler approach. That is what is more effective. On top of that, you know, there's sort of of, there are ways to simplify you know, the text itself just in terms of um you know are you are you going to be sent like i when i send emails i always try to make sure there aren't like more than two or three lines of text and that doesn't mean two or three sentences that means you know visible to the reader on, on when they open the email there's there's no there's not more than two or three lines together in a block um, because when you read on e uh, on, a, uh, on a computer on a phone you tend to skim and it's really hard to skim a gigantic paragraph and on mobile, it's even worse because the screen is so narrow. All the text sort of, you know, it, you can have this gigantic rectangular block of that's just nobody wants to bother looking at it. Um, so if you can use some, you know, white space in between, just design-wise, it makes it a lot easier to kind of concentrate on what's being presented to you. Um, I found that works really well. I agree 100%. And even just keeping the text itself short. So we just finished the book launch blueprint launch. Uh, So it's closed now. You have to wait until 2020 if you want to go through the book launch blueprint course with Jim and me. But uh, when we were sending out emails promoting it, the most effective email was only two sentences long, or at least at the point we're recording. That's been the most effective email. So I put together these epic tomes, like blog post level emails that are like seven things you need to know before launching your book. And what was the most effective? The two sentence version of that. (laughs) So uh, less is more. And it it hurts me to say that because it's fun to write and make these big epic things. But that sometimes is not the most uh, efficient and effective way of approaching uh, email marketing. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about book sweeps. Um, This is your service to help authors grow their email list. What exactly is it? Book sweeps is a book giveaway and lead lead generation platform, uh, primarily geared to fiction authors, though we do work with some uh, nonfiction authors. Actually, most of the nonfiction authors we work with are Christian authors. So I think that's um, probably relevant to your audience a little bit. Um, So, uh, but... Primarily what we do, we run uh, promotions that are geared to helping authors build their uh, email lists and their uh, BookBub followers and Amazon followers. Um, so for our email list building promotions, we, uh, you know, we run a schedule every, uh, we put out a schedule every three months or so, and the, each promotion is geared to a very specific niche. Um, so we might do a giveaway for contemporary cowboy romance or space opera sci-fi or, you know, uh, cozy mystery, uh, etc. Um, and for each promotion, there each promotion usually has about thirty to forty authors in it. Um, and then, so we create a contest page. We uh, provide promotional materials, uh, tips and emails, tips and new uh, tips and reminders via email. Um, and then we have our own list of a hundred thousand 
ish readers that we promote it to uh, by email. Uh, we also have a Facebook uh, page of about 10,000 uh, people uh, uh, that we promote it to. Um, and then, you know, obviously we encourage authors to promote them uh, as well. And, you know, so that's sort of the gist. So with 100,000 s- subscribers, it's almost like a book bub. Book sweeps is almost like book bub. But instead of being designed around selling the book to readers who you don't know, and don't really get to know unless you're using some advanced uh, techniques that you actually didn't talk about. At the end of your book, uh, you should have a page that says, hey, sign up <laughs> to get uh, updates from me at the end of every copy of your book. And you need to have a, a direction back to your website. We should have mentioned that earlier. Um, but the way Book Sweeps is uh, designed is it's about getting those 100,000 people and kind of introducing them to you so that they get a free copy of a short story or something in exchange for you getting their email address. So you can start building that relationship with them directly. Right. So the giveaways we run, they usually have a big prize, like an e-reader, and then also each uh, author will give away a couple copies of their book. Um, And then so when readers get to that landing page, they can um, select the authors that they want to hear from. There's some information about each author on that page, um, and they confirm it. um, And then, you know, we distribute the emails after the promotion ends. Okay, so let's, let's just kind of walk through what this would look like. I'm a fan of space opera, and you send an email out. Uh, promoting the space opera list. And so I click on the, to your 100,000 people and I'm one of those 100,000. So I click the link and it takes me to a page that's got 40 authors and I can click, oh, this in- author is interesting. This author is interesting. And for each author I click, this is interesting. My email address goes to that author for them to send me you know, more information about their books. And I get entered to win the big prize. Is that how it works? Yeah, essentially, yeah. So there's a you know, there's a form. There are check boxes by each author's name. They can, and then further down the page, there's an area that provides some information about each of the authors. Um, so they would go to the form. They would enter their name, their their email, and they would check off the names of the authors that they want to hear from. Click submit, and then you know there's some other little confirmation steps in there. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. I'd imagine as an author, the best way to make this effective if you're doing a book sweep is to have that first email they get from you um, say, hey, here's a free short story or a free book so that reader can get to know your reading or your writing style and story world and all of that in a deeper way. Perhaps even your characters, if your short story is with characters from your main book. And then suddenly you've taken somebody from being a total stranger to being a reader and potentially a purchaser of your books and a subscriber all in a very quick uh, window. Right. Yeah. So each promotion only lot takes about uh, a week or two, like usually 10 days or 14 days or so. So, I mean, at the end of that, you usually have around, you know, 400 to 800 or more new people on your list who you can, um, you know, tell about your books. Like, like you said, Thomas, definitely offering a free book first or for a sample or something like that is the best way to go. I kind of, you know, I like the analogy of like, you know, somebody coming to your door and being like, oh, hey, I heard you're a, you know, I heard you're a romance author. Um, And then, you know, the author opens the door (laughs) and says, buy my book. You know, like nobody, (laughs) nobody's going to respond to that well. So, I mean, if you offer something, you know, they can learn a little bit about you first. So I'm like, you know, a little bit of a charming intro. Um, That definitely, you know, is a lot better of a tactic. So Ryan, let me ask you, you, you have, um, I mean, it's great. You get this influx of new readers, but potentially they've signed up for a bunch of other authors as well. And so all of a sudden they're getting all 15 short stories or 20 short stories. How do you make your, how do you make yourself stand out from all the other um, authors that have just signed up with these folks? Well, I mean, honestly, uh, one thing they could do is, you know, follow the tips we've sort of been talking about so far, just in terms of, you know, formatting the email you know, presenting yourself in a way that's sort of professional, not uh, overwhelming. Um, I, I think a lot of authors are still making sort of rookie mistakes um, in terms of, you know, having like really colorful background images, like background, like a pur- like a purple background with like navy text on top of it kind of thing. But Ryan, I write horror. My email has to be dark <laughs> with light text because I got to convey that emotion of horror. <laughs> <laughs> All these images of blood have to be <laughs> on the page. I don't think we're yet at a point in terms of like uh, we're, we're with authors in, in their skill level in email marketing where, you know, there's some really, really basic things any author could do to stand out still. Uh, I think maybe in a few years we'll be at a point where, you know, you really need to up your game. But I think still there's a lot of low-hanging fruit 
Um, so just sort of, you know, uh, formatting issues, you know, making sure that your emails are mobile responsive and that, you know, your images, if you're going to include images, look okay. And I would say having an onboarding sequence. So they get a series of introductory emails that introduce them to you. So they're not just getting your like monthly newsletter. And yes, for those of you wondering, we are going to do our episode on onboarding sequences and we are going to have an example onboarding sequence. Uh, We are still working on it. We are sorry (laughs) that it is taking so long, but yes, it is still coming. It's on our list of things to do. And Thomas is, this is, it's one of the reasons I love Thomas. He said, we are working on it and really it's, (laughs) It's it's me that needs to be working on it. So thank you, Thomas. It's it's me. It's my fault. So yes, we are working on it. I am working on it. So uh, we're we're almost out of time, Ryan. But uh, how much does Book Sweeps cost? What does this look like? Um, so the promotions differ a little bit in terms of we we actually just recently changed the pricing to be more genre uh, dependent. But most of the promotions are in the uh, twenty five to fifty dollar ish range. Uh, depending on what the promotion is exactly and the genre that you write in. So let's say I'm I'm writing in um, science fiction and it costs me fifty dollars to sign up. How many email subscribers can I expect to get? What's a range of new subscribers to the list? So I, the range is sort of anywhere from four hundred to maybe twelve hundred, with most of them usually falling in the middle of that. So there you go. If you want a quick and fast way of growing your email list, this is one of the most cost efficient, which is why I wanted to get Ryan on the show. There are other ways of growing your list uh, with Facebook advertising, but $50 for 400 emails is uh, way cheaper than what you're going to get on Facebook uh, for <laughs> sure. Uh, it's not uncommon on Facebook to expect to spend about a dollar to $2 an email. Some people can do it cheaper and get it at like 50 cents an email. Uh, but to with um, multiplying a percentage by a percentage by the time people sign up and go through the whole process, it's not uncommon for it to be about a buck an email. So uh, $50 for 400 emails was at 10 cents an email roughly. Or, um, it's a much, much cheaper source of emails. Well, and the other thing is we're not getting any commission from Ryan or any of these signups. So this is... Yeah, we should be, Ryan. You should hook us up. <laughs> we should be, yeah. But th- this is totally uh, organic and uh, unasked for uh, endorsement of him, but you don't have to do all the work. <laughs> Ryan does all the work, right? You don't have to place the ad and follow up and all this kind of thing. Ryan's system, it's like, and again, coming from a non-techie author, it's like, that's really appealing. All I have to do is, you know, do this simple stuff and Ryan's back end does all the work for you. And you're ch- chipping in on that prize, right? So if they're winning a Kindle or what have you, you know. Yeah, we pay for the prize. Right. So in a sense, it's cheaper than buying your own Kindle and giving it away. So I really like what you're doing. I think it's a really great approach. And it's one of the few easy things um, that really gets a lot of emails all at once. Um so one final question. Talk us a little bit about the difference between an organic subscriber and a sweepstakes subscriber. Should people be treating them differently? Should they tag them differently? And if they're using something like ConvertKit or MailChimp? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely would. Uh, if, you, if you know what you're doing and you're able to segment them, um, I definitely would recommend that just so that you have a sense of you know how they're performing relative to other subscribers that you have. Um, and then, like I was saying before, just in terms of the way you approach uh, subscribers that come from a, I mean, it, it's similar to sort of to subscribers that would come from a Facebook ad, except that these are readers who are probably on multiple lists already. Um, and so they, they're they heavier duty readers probably than the subscriber you would get from a, from a typical Facebook ad. Um, uh, and it's sort of writing to them from that perspective, understanding that they signed up for you through this particular kind of method and that they're expecting you know, probably something for free up front. Um, but then, you know, we've, uh, you know, you can always sell on the back end. I, I would say probably wait. Definitely, you know, if you want to include a, a sales link at the bottom of that first email, that's probably fine. But I would make that first email about sort of being encouraging and sort of opening the door to them and opening the door to a relationship with the, with that reader. That's really good. And um, yeah, we really appreciate you coming on the show today. Where can people find out more about you? I would recommend if you're interested in learning more about Book Sweeps, going to booksweeps.com slash authors. And from there, you can learn more about our promotions and how to register uh, and all that good stuff. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Um, Our featured patron today is the book You're the Cream in My Coffee by Jennifer Lamont Leo. Uh, 
This is a book where a small town woman travels to Chicago and thinks she finds her beloved, uh, who she thought was killed in the war, alive in a train station, and suddenly everything in her life is up for grabs. Jennifer Lamont Leo, thank you so much for being a patron. If you would like to become a patron of the Novel Marketing Podcast and potentially see some embarrassing photos of Thomas and Jim, thank you, Ryan. Um, you can find out more. Uh, you can find out more at, at novelmarketing.com and you can also find out more at patreon.com. Just do a search for novel marketing there. And we are really thankful for all of our patrons who help make the show possible. And there are exclusive episodes that only patrons get every month. There's one exclusive patrons only novel marketing episode. So you're not getting the full novel marketing experience if you're not a patron. And our sponsor today is My Book Table, which is the number one books a WordPress uh, plugin for building a bookstore on your website. It helps you rank number one uh, on Google. And the free version now comes with Amazon affiliate integration. This is a brand new feature in the free version of the plugin. You used to have to pay for the pro version to integrate with Amazon affiliates. Now it is available for everyone. And you can find out more at mybooktable.com. You've been listening to James L. Rubart, Thomas Umstead Jr., and today, Ryan Z. on the Novel Marketing Podcast, giving you innovative ideas on how to promote yourself and your writing offline, online, and everywhere in between. Thank you so much for listening.